Last week, thank God for giving us the message of Judges, chapter 7. Okay. May God help us to become fearless and vigilant soldiers of Christ, like Gideon and 300 men. Mm. Fight against any fear and in each going mentality. Fight against, drive out. Jonathan, be a man of faith. I be God-fearing woman. God fear God. The people. Amen. Okay. Today, the title of my message is The Guilt Offering. Key verse is verse 16. Let's read the key verse together. Yeah, please. He must make restitution for what he has failed to do in regard to the holy things. Add a fifth of the value to that and give it all the priest, who will make atonement for him with a ram as a guilt offering, and he will be forgiven. Okay. Uh, thank God for the wonderful words concerning the sin offering. What is specific about sin offering is to sprinkle the blood of the bull, the blood of animal, seven times before the Lord, in front of the curtain of the sanctuary, seven times of blood sprinkling, refers to perfect forgiveness, and curtain separated the most holy place from the holy place. It symbolizes the barrier between God and man. Then when Jesus died on the cross, shedding his whole blood, curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So, the way for us to come to God is opened. Great God. And curtain signifies, according to Hebrews, curtain is Jesus' body, totally broken on the cross. We have a new and living way to come to God, and God wants us to draw, to draw near to Him. What a blessing. Also, the blood was sprinkled on the horns of the altar of incense that is right before the most holy place. And blood was sprinkled on the horns of the burnt offering that was in the courtyard. Meaning is that all the authority has been restored, beginning with the authority, the privilege to pray. And you have to know that Sin breaks the relationship, our relationship with God, and make our relationship with others superficial. When sin is neglected, with no confession and repentance, the effect of sin becomes worse and worse. Sin problem should be resolved at its time. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his whole blood for all our sins. And God wants us to live in this utmost blessing of forgiveness of sins, resulting in restoration of life in every area. That's about sin offering, very precious words of God. As today's offering, today's passage is about the guilt offering, an offering of atonement for a sin where restitution is to be done. As for sin against the Lord's property, restitution is to be made to the priest. In other case, it is to be made to the person who suffered the loss. It is to protect God's people, God's community, as a holy nation. And it is, it is practically honor God as God, respect other believers in God's community. And this guilt offering reminds us of Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for our redemption, so that we might belong to God, being freed from the grip of sin and Satan. The guilt offering teaches us that we may become we may be, we may take responsibility on what belongs to God, what belongs to others, 
with a clear attitude, especially toward materials. Further, it teaches that in the grace of Jesus, God wants us to live a life of service and giving. And guilt offering is compulsory along with the sin offering. The passage concerning the guilt offering starts with the words, The Lord said to Moses, It's like that of a sin offering. This expression shows that these are the words of the Lord. Then it says, When a person commits a violation, and sins unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things. Your person is the fish, as in the case of sin offering, the fish. So this offering is for those who want to live a new life and grow mature as a new creation. Hmm. And here, commits a violation in King's Inspiration, commits a trespass. Trespass and NASB is acts unfaithfully. So the Hebrew word mal is written, is translated into three ways violation, trespass, and unfaithfulness. So guilt offering is trespass offering. In Hebrew, atham meaning offense. Violation against others' property. So you can think of it as a reparation or restitution offering or compensation offering. Then, what are the holy things here? Any of the, in what, any of the Lord's holy things. In Numbers chapter, in Numbers chapter 4, it talks about holy furnishings. Holy articles. The Kohathites are to carry the holy things that are in the tabernacle, carry on their shoulders, not touching it, so they might not die. So holy things are things belonging to God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 26, firstborn, first fruits belong to God. And in Numbers, Leviticus 27, a tithe of everything, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, tithe of everything is holy to the Lord. And in Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, not offering a tithe to God is robbing God. Very strong expression. There is an interesting conversation between the Lord and the Israelites. The people of Israel says, how do you return to the Lord? How do you return to God? Then the Lord says, Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. Then Israel says, How do we rob you? In tithe and offerings. Then you are under a curse. The whole nation of you. Because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. So, tithing is a holy duty of God's people. At the same time, it's a clue through which God wants to, God wants to make abundant material blessings. He wants to make abundant provisions for his people. Do that. So God says continually, test me. And see, if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out much blessing, then you would not have room enough for it. This promise of God has been proven true to all those who fought, tied sincerely, purely to God. True, has been proven in the lives of such people. Again, a tied is holy to God. And here, I'm talking about a person commits a violation and sins un unintentionally in regard to any of the, those holy things. Then, what he is to do? He is to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock. 
found without defect and a proper value in silver, according to the sanctuary shekel, is guilt offering. Here, of the proper value is, in other translations, in King James Version, with a thigh estimation, thy estimation by shekels of silver. And NASB, according to your estimate, assessment in silver by shekels. So according to Moses' estimation, what size or quality of animal is to be brought? Ram is to be brought. He, to, he will make estimation, make a sound judgment for the violation. And at that time, the price of a slave is 30 shekels of silver. So ram, several shekels. So at least a seventh of the price of a slave. Ram has to be they to offer a ram. And now, let's read this verse together. Verse 16, from verse 16. Okay, please. We must make restitution for what he has failed to do in regard to the holy things. Add a fifth of the value to that and give it all to the priest who will make atonement for him with a ram as a guilt offering. And he'll be forgiven. See? Here. In the case of sin offering, forgiveness comes through atonement. But in the case of guilt offering, forgiveness comes through restitution and atonement. Then they are forgiven. Adding a fifth of the value. So for restitution, 120% of the value should be paid. Here, when you think about God, when you consider God, who is spirit, it's easy to think that materials do not matter to God. It's true that repentance should be from the heart. Yet repentance involves materials, treasure. That's why Jesus said, where your heart is, there your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Materials, treasures and treasure and heart go together. And Jesus says further, you cannot serve both God and money. True. The more we live, true. You cannot serve both God and money. In Luke's Gospel, when Jacob repented and accepted Jesus, he said, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. If I have cheated anyone out of anything, I'll give, I'll pay back four times the amount. This was a beautiful true repentance. And David said in 2 Samuel chapter 24, I will not sacrifice the Lord my God, burnt offering that cost me nothing. If something is not out of my own pocket, we do not know the value. And in Numbers, God told Moses to take Levites for him, for God, in the place of firstborn males, firstborn male, one month old or more. So Moses counted, and the number of the Israelites male was 22,273. And Levites, 22,000. So the difference was 273. It's just 1%. God could pass it. But God said to Moses, you gave, God gave, gave, gave direction to Moses, you should redeem 273 by collecting five shekels for each person. So Moses collected the money. That's counted 1,365 shekels. Moses collected and gave it to Aaron and his sons. Yes, to God, each person is precious. Each one should be redeemed. But in terms of money, God is accurate. God is also responsive, even small amount of money. Jesus praised the offering of a widow, two very small copper coins. That's just, I think, less than five dollars. Yes, praying to God. Yes, because that was her whole of offering. Money matters to God. And here, 120% of restitution is lower than what is described, prescribed in the Mosaic law. If a, in Exodus, 
um, deep is caught, then he should pay back double. And in the court, if he is guilty, then he should also pay, pay back double. This can be the case of adjudicated, forced conviction, but for voluntary confession, yes, 120 percent. So God is really think about not just heavy burden on the offender, mindful. Just he may know the speed of guilt offering. In this part, we learn that God wants to be responsible for what belongs to God, not taking it for granted. Mm. Now let's think about the case of making restitution to other fellow men. Mm. It says, the Lord said to Moses, again, these are the words of the Lord. Let's read this part responsibly. i read first. If anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving his neighbor about something interest to him, or left in his care or stolen, or if he cheats him, Okay. When he does sins and becomes guilty, he must return what he has stolen or taken by extortion, or what is interest to him, or the lost property found, or whatever it was he swore falsely about. He must make restitution for and of the value of and the day before the owner. You see, you see, God's concern is detailed. Dealing with seven cases of becoming guilty. Seven cases. Deceiving his neighbor about things of interest to him. And what? Well, interest to him. And then left in his care or stolen. Or if he cheats him. And then find lost property and lies about it. Then swears for if he swears falsely and then commits any such sin. Seven cases of sinning. And returning five cases. Return. You have what you have stolen, taken by extortion, or interest to him. And lost property you found, and then whatever it was, to swore, he swore falsely. So five cases. So God is really trying to cover all cases. Be mindful of the offender and offended. Don't be missed. You see, God's mind. Mindful of both. And the restitution should be made, adding fifth of the value to the one who is hurt. At the very day, he presents the guilt offering. In this way, the offended would be soothed and refreshed. And here, the cause of sin is being unfaithful to the Lord. When our relationship with God is not right, our relationship with others cannot be right. And restitution should be done, not just lips, but with the cost paid. And then it says, here, I read verse 6, and as a penalty, he must bring to the priest, that is to the Lord, his guilt offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect, and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him before the Lord, and he'll be forgiven for any of these things he did that made him guilty. So, also, when our relationship with God is right, it should be expressed in our relationship with others. If one's sins are forgiven, it should be shown to the people around him. But there are people among believers who take advantage of others in terms of money. Because of money, the relationship can be broken with much damage. Because of love of money, one even loses his or her mission with the faith shipwrecked. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 6, the love of money is the cause of root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. I really want us to be, to be very clear in dealing with money. As Paul said in Romans chapter 13, verse 8, 
no debt be, no, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. So any debt must be paid back as early as possible, with only the debt of love remaining. We also want to be to be sensitive to others' time, especially to the believers, not making use of their generosity. Also, when you read Exodus, if you are a lender, be mindful to the borrower, particularly when he is needy and poor. And then Paul said to the elders in Ephesian church, at a farewell meeting he said, remembering the, Lord, the word he has spoken, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Wow, you and I may know this blessedness of giving. We are accustomed to receiving and have joy there, but it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen, Daniela and Eunice? Who is more blessed? To give or to receive? To give, yeah? Jonathan and Avi, who is more blessed? To give or to receive? Give. Yes, give. Give, right? <sighs> you may have that blessing. <clears throat> blessedness, blessedness of joy of giving. As you start in first, second Corinthians chapter 9, Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Hmm? So in a reaping principle, right? And God loves a cheerful giver. And then God says, God, He is able to make all grace abound to you. So in all things, in at all times, having all you need, you may abound in every good work. All. All five times comes to give all his grace. Mm. And most importantly, the guilt offering, the trespass offering, or restitution, compensation offering points to our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 and 24 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified, freely justified, justified freely by, the, by His grace to the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, You are bought at a price. Again, chapter 7, You are bought at a price. In Ephesians chapter 1, In Him we have redemption. Colossians, In whom we have redemption. And 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Hebrews 9, 15 says, He has died as a ransom to set us free. And 9, 12 says, He entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. In Revelation chapter 5, 25 elders sent to the Lamb a new song. For you, you are worthy, for with your blood you purchased man for God from every tribe, language, and people and nation. So what a rich expression concerning a ransom, redemption, and purchasing. The redemption is eternal, eternal redemption. Purchasing is purchased for God, eternal purchasing. The price he paid is incredible, immeasurable, incomparable. The Son of God, who is infinite, came into this world and gave his life, shedding his blood. There are 8 billion people here, back throughout history, more than six, 16 billion people have lived. But still, 16 billion is a finite number. Infinite God came, gave his life. What a price! <clears throat> wow. What a redemption because of the price. So finally, what is the speed of the guilt offering? You must make restitution, adding a fifth, give it to the priest. And then you must make restitution in full, make restitution in full, adding a fifth, give it to the owner. So God wants us to be men and people of responsibility, clearly knowing what belongs to God, what belongs to others, as holy people and members of God's community. 
Furthermore, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are eternal debtors. Eternally, we are debtors. Eternal debtors to Him with a debt unpayable. No way. But God wants us to have a debtor's heart. God wants you and me to have a debtor's heart. Debtor's heart is a beautiful heart. This reason Paul said, I'm obliged to both Greeks and Jews, both Greeks and non-Greeks, both the wise and foolish. That's why I'm so eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. That's why Jesus said, Do you love me? Feed my lambs. With debtor's heart, God wants us to live a life of service, life of giving and sacrifice. Let's remember again just what it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for helping us to think about the guilt offering. Father, how much your concern, your community, your people is to protect the community of God, his holy nation. And it's how to honor God and pray to respect other fellows. Father, may know the spirit of guilt offering way to make restitution ready to pay back right away also more than that Father in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life for us incredible payment he made for our redemption that is eternal truly we are eternal debtors. Help us to have debtors' heart and live a life of serving, giving, and sacrifice. Lord, once again I pray, we deeply accept Jesus' words. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Giving spirit be abound in among us. Thank you for your precious words. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.